Today I'm going to show you guys the settings that I use to get the most cinematic footage out of the Panasonic G7. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm also going to show you guys how to unlock the record limit in 4K, giving you unlimited record time. So let's check it out. I know a lot of my subscribers own the Panasonic G7 because I get a lot of questions and comments from you guys on my recent Panasonic G7 in 2020 review video. If you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go check it out. I will leave a link for you right up here as well as in the description. But I wanted to give something back to you guys and kind of show you guys the settings that I use to get the most that I can out of that camera and hopefully help you guys get more out of it as well. So if you like that whole sequence that you just saw at the beginning, that was all shot using the G7 just a couple days ago. So I'm going to show you guys the settings that I use. And again, make sure that you hang out to the end because I'm also going to show you guys how to unlock the record limit in 4K. But let's dive in. Once we're in the menu system, the first thing that we're going to change is the photo style. We don't really want to use the standard photo style because that's going to give us the least amount to work with in post. We want something that has a little bit more of a film style look, which is Cine Like D. The D is for dynamic range. This is going to give us more dynamic range in the image by changing the gamma curve and giving us more to work with in post. This is assuming that, that you're going to do some kind of post processing. So what I like to do to take it a step further is go down to the contrast and take it down to minus one. I don't want to go too far with any of this because this is only an 8-bit image and you can't push things around too far without deteriorating the image. So I take the contrast down to minus one. The sharpness, I just kind of leave it where it's at. Noise reduction, this is going to kind of depend on your computer. So I take the noise reduction down to minus two because I prefer to do the noise reduction myself in post because my computer can handle it. Not always do I have to do noise reduction and I don't want the camera changing the image if I don't have to. And so, but again, this kind of depends on your computer. If your computer is not very powerful, then you might want to just go ahead and take that to minus one or leave it at zero. So the camera is going to do the noise reduction for you. From there, I take the saturation down to one. And again, this is just going to kind of give me more to work with in post. So we're going to hit set. The next setting we're going to change is our record quality. You want to make sure that you have it set to something like 4K 24 frames per second versus 30 frames per second. The reason why you want to use 24 frames per second is because that's more what we're used to out of Hollywood for cinematic film. Plus, it also gives you the most natural motion blur that our eyes are kind of accustomed to. 30 frames per second is more for live stuff or more action type scenes, but also 24 frames per second shoots at 100 megabits just like 30 does. And so you're going to get more information per frame by going to 24 frames per second. If you want to do some slow-mo stuff in post, then you can do 1080, 60 frames per second and then slow that down to 40% if you're on a 24 frames per second timeline. So we're going to choose 24 frames per second here. Now we want to go down and change our luminance level. You want to make sure that this is set at 0 to 255, not 16 to 255. 16 to 255 is something meant more for broadcast safe requirements. It's going to actually clip off that luminance range from 0 to 16. But we want 0 to, to 255 because that's going to give us the most information in post to be able to manipulate our image. So set that to 0 to 255. 
The final thing that you wanna make sure that is turned off is eye dynamic range and eye resolution. We don't want the camera making any of the choices for us. We wanna do all of that ourselves in post. So if you have any questions or comments in regards to those settings, let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to help you guys out. If there's something that you do differently that you feel others would benefit from, let us know down there as well. But before we dive into unlocking the record limit on this camera, I ask you guys, if you have found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up. It take the time to do that. It definitely helps the channel out. And if you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing as well as hitting that bell for future notifications. But let's go ahead and jump into unlocking the record limit in 4K. To unlock the record limit in 4K, which you can see is set to 30 minutes here, the first thing that we wanna do is shut the camera off, turn the mode dial over to P, make sure that we're in single shot mode, and then we're gonna press the white balance button, the display button, and the auto focus lock button all at the same time, and then turn the camera on. Once you do that, hit the play button, hold the ISO up button and the auto focus lock button, and then turn the camera off you should see that little warning asterisk symbol there. That's how you know that you did things right. Now, if you turn the camera back on and you flip it over to movie mode, you can see here, now you've got unlimited record time. Mine says an hour and 24 minutes because of the size of SD card I have in there, but you can record unlimited to different size SD cards. So if you decide that you don't like that little asterisk symbol there and warning and you want to reset the camera, it's very easy to do. Uh, turn the camera off, go back to P mode and make sure that you're in single shot. Turn the camera on, then you're gonna hold down the menu button and the white balance button at the same time. Turn the camera off and it'll take you to this menu here. Then just hit the white balance button twice and the camera's gonna shut off and it's gonna reset. Then once you turn the camera back on, it's gonna walk you through all the factory settings, setting up your language, time, location, things like that. And the camera will be back to normal. I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are able to get more out of your camera. Again, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section below. And please, again, take the time to hit that thumbs up if you did find it helpful. I'm really trying to hit a thousand subscribers on this video and celebrate with you guys the growth of this channel. But that's pretty much it for today's video. I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for stopping by.